happy thanksgiving <coughs> i hope you had a wonderful time with your family but amarillo was not good it was snowing all day it was very cold anyway now this talk is about plasma protein binding which i will teach tomorrow you learn some of the new concept about what is total and free drug what are the three major plasma proteins and what is free fraction in the blood and free fraction in the tissue and how pharmacological effect and clearance after of a drug changes with plasma protein bindings and you will also learn later the drugs with varying clearance and volume distribution <coughs> first it is not in my note but i am using this chart or scheme to explain some of the major concepts of protein binding first you have to remember that only free drug free free drug is responsible for pharmacological effect and only free drug is excreted or eliminated by the organ metabolizing organ or kidney this two concept you have to remember only free drug not protein but so when you take drug assume these are protein so what happens in case of high and low protein bound drugs in case of high protein bind drug a, a drug which binds extensively with protein we will have lower free drug concentration lower free drug concentration that means reduced clearance but higher total drug concentration total drug concentration means when total drug we say free drug plus bound drug so higher total drug concentration <coughs> you have to think or imagine what happened in case of lower free drug concentration when you have reduced high protein but the drug concentration free drug concentration is going to decrease so and as we do not have much free drug clearance will be less much less than high bound drug and then but total drug concentration it is going to be high in the body total drug concentration is going to increase because there is majority of the drug is bound with the protein and wha what happened in case of low binding drugs is going to be high free drug concentration high clearance lower total drug concentration okay lower total drug concentration but what is not going to change for in both cases same free drug concentration in in this case you see there will be always a balance <coughs> there is a balance for a high total drug concentration that means free plus bound drug and then here free plus bound drug when higher total drug concentration that means you have higher bound drug lower total drug concentration we have lower bound drug so but concentration of the free drug does is equal most of the cases but i uh, will discuss in some situation this could be misleading but for the time being i want you to remember this concept again you just read this slide and try to comprehend comprehend what is happening in case of as always 
clearance is related to free drug that means high free drug high clearance and lower total drug because because of the clearance drug concentration decreases so total drug concentration is going to reduce here because of the low clearance total drug, drug concentration is going to increase but this low clearance and high clearance in this case will balance out the free drug concentration okay now <coughs> When you say total drug concentration, it gives a good estimate of free drug concentration. We usually we use when in, in research or in in the hospital, we will always use total drug concentration. In the technology or methodology, analytical methodology, what we have in the lab that measures always total drug. That means free plus bound drug although we are measuring total drug but this gives a good estimate of the free drug you can uh, faithfully say okay this is total drug based on this you assume all these are in for free drug so here <coughs> I think one concept that blood versus plasma concentration as i have mentioned before that kinetic parameter drugs are calculated based on plasma concentration instead of the whole blood concentration i think renal clearance lecture i have discussed this thing the kinetic parameter of drugs are calculated based on drug concentration plasma instead of whole blood we do not usually quantitate drug in the whole blood we measure drug concentration in the plasma so and it is assumed the kinetic parameters using the plasma and blood would be identical when blood plasma concentration ratio is one so we always assume the amount amount or concentration concentration in blood concentration in blood okay, let's see here concentration concentration in blood divided by the concentration in plasma if this ratio is 1 to it always is. when ratio is one that means concentration of the plasma concentration of the drug in plasma reflect the concentration of the blood or concentration of the blood oh the concentration in the plasma will reflect concentration in the blood so this is the kinetic power obtained using the plasma and blood would be identical when plasma blood concentration ratio and we assume always blood plasma concentration ratio one so one thing uh, you have to assume so to avoid confusion that this is the assumption we have made and I'll come back to this uh, scheme later and we also know there are three major proteins albumin alpha 1 acid glycoprotein which we call AAG and lipoprotein as you can see here albumin is synthesized in the liver this AAG also synthesized in the liver lipoproteins are synthesized in the liver and intestinal mucosa one of the distinction between these three major protein is you can see that concentration albumin is the highest albumin with a concentration of 3.5 to 5 gram per deciliter this is the concentration of 0.0 to 0.1 gram per deciliter so which protein uh, which protein you have the highest concentration in the blood albumin I have more detail in the notes so I will go over the this three proteins during the class.
now we have an equation this is a very complex but simple equation if you focus on this equation we if you first we have to dissect the equation first this is the volume volume distribution volume of steady state we have to we are going to use this equation b v s s volume at steady state and we have some parameter here it is called b v b real blood volume real blood volume which is real blood volume which is 0 0.07 liter per kilo and easily 5 liter in a 70 kilo patient and here we have another parameter is called VT real extracellular volume if you go back to that scheme which is not in the you know note because this is part of physiology here total body water we have plasma we have interstitial fluid we have intracellular fluid volume and all together we have 42 liters of body water and we have 42 liters of body water here if you see this is intracellular which is 28 liter and remaining is extra remaining fluid is extracellular which is 14 liter and then interstitial volume is 10 liter and plasma is about 4 liter so volume of distribution where drug distributes depends also on the properties of the drug for example if the drug is very lipophilic drug is very lipophilic vt drug is very lipophilic real extravascular volume is the total body water minus the blood volume total body water minus the blood volume if you multiply this with uh, think about like mm, doing the calculation point point six times seventy this is forty two liter so vt volume of tissue is about forty two liter in case of in case of lipophilic drug because this drug distributes both this drug distributes both in the extracellular and intracellular spaces but in case of hydrophilic drug the volume of tissue tissue volume is this one which is 0.13 times 70 is like 9 liter for hydrophilic drugs because hydrophilic drug is the volume of the extracellular water and the minus the plasma water because polar drugs do not penetrate the intracellular place so there are two volume we have to remember one for hydro lipophilic drug one for hydrophilic drug but in, in the calculation I don't believe we are going to use different uh, volume uh, different type of drugs so and this is the equation you have to remember this is as I have mentioned this is your real blood volume this is VT here this is fraction unbound that means free drug fraction unbound free drug in the blood and here free drug in the tissue fraction unbound and here this is one parameter this is one parameter it's called apparent tissue volume where drug is distributed so here you see this b here b vb is the real blood volume here this is the entire parameter Okay, that is FUB fraction unbound in the blood divided by fraction 
unwound in the tissue times VT. This would be called apparent tissue volume where the drug is distributed. When we ask you to calculate apparent tissue volume, you calculate the entire thing. Don't play with others. You just calculate the entire parameter. Just that means you, you subtract B V S S minus B B when we are asked to calculate. So now one of the important if we dissect this equation you will come up with some conclusion quickly first let's uh, before moving to the next slide i wanted to see this is fraction unbound when you do not have much unbound drug it is almost zero almost zero then our vss is going to be vv that means fraction unbound almost is a high protein bound drug uh, here we go. FUB increase FUB will increase VSS, but increase FUT will reduce VSS. Here it is, does it make sense? If we look into this equation here, if we increase this, what is going to happen? This is going to increase. But assuming this is fixed, if we increase this, this is going to decrease. This is what it said. I will ask a question about it. Remember, increase FUB will increase VSS, increase FUT will reduce VSS. And here, there are some drugs with very low VSS. That means we will have. VSS almost equal to VB. If you go back to that equation, our equation was what? VSS is equal to VB plus FUB divided by FUT and then VT. You have very low, uh, very low VSS. That means that drug has little volume, small volume distribution. That means there is little or no free drug so here if it becomes zero almost so v s s is going to be v v for example in case of the changes in blood and tissue binding would not significantly affect v s s so if little changes occurs here and there there will be no change in the v s s but drug with very large v s s as you can see VSS is going to be this one FUB FUT VT so now you can see changes in this drug FUB or FUT would affect the VSS volume steady distribution volume at steady state almost proportionally this is this equation you have to understand very well so that you can imagine or do the calculation that or connect the dot between what is happening when you have a very large volume distribution steady state volume distribution drug if anything changes here fut fub because you know that this t is not going to change vt but if anything changes here there will be change in vss in case of here this equation vss is equal to VV1. So that means any changes in FUB or FUT is not going to affect small VSS drugs, small volume distribution drug, but large volume distribution drugs, any change in the protein binding will affect the VSS. And as you know, you will learn this later. When volume distribution changes, clearance changes, half life will change. That means what? This protein binding can affect half life. When it affects half life, it can affect the dose. Now, possible questions. Pharmacological efficacy and clearance depends on what drug? Free drug. Free drug of free fraction. 
which type of drugs high or low protein binding drugs will have more free drug in the body which type of drugs high or low protein binding drug will have low protein binding drug low protein binding drug will have more free drug in the body it's not proper science here what are the difference between drug concentration in the whole blood and that in plasma drug concentration you know that when we collect blood we separate the cells and other stuffs and we quantitate the drug only in plasma and we do not take into consideration how much drug is with the cells or other stuffs of the blood so if we had calculated the drug in the entire blood it would be drug concentration in the blood but we always calculate drug concentration in the plasma so easily plasma concentration gives a good idea about the drug concentration in the blood and we based on this assumption that blood concentration and plasma concentration is equal to 1 what are the factors that influence a steady state volume which protein concentration is the highest in the blood albumin what are the factors that affect steady state concentration in the volume? Steady state, steady state volume, steady state. What here? If you look into this, fraction unbound in the blood, fraction unbound in the tissue, and also type of the drug. Will what are the factors in for steady state volume? Type of the drug, hydrophilic or hydrophobic influence. What is the apparent tissue volume? In this equation, this would be called apparent tissue volume. Again, here, which component of the equation is called? This is the component of this equation. Because I am uh, emphasizing this because you have to sometimes do the calculation so that you remember, okay, when we have this data, this data, this data, you get confused. What I am going to calculate? In fact, you have to calculate this entire thing. I hope this helps. Tomorrow, I will see you in the class. Thank you.